No matter the efforts of his parents, their newborn son cried throughout the day. After some time, they inspected his crib and discovered an unexpected item, a pebble engraved with their son's initials, Amanda, who became pregnant at 18, faced pressure to terminate her pregnancy due to her young age. Her mother, Rebecca, warned her that keeping the baby would destroy her future. However, Amanda's boyfriend Daniel, who was 20 at the time, stood by her and proposed as soon as he learned about the pregnancy, sharing in her joy and anticipation, the couple soon married, supported by Daniel's mother, Mrs. Hamilton. Mrs. Hamilton reassured Amanda, don't worry, dear, you, Daniel, and your little one are welcome to stay with me as long as necessary. This house is as much yours as it is mine. She was a beacon of support at the couple's modest wedding, comforting Amanda through the anxieties and challenges of pregnancy. Upon the arrival of their son, whom Mrs. Hamilton suggested they name Billy, she quickly embraced her role as a doting grandmother, whether changing Billy's diapers at 2 a.m. or giving Amanda relaxing head massages, Mrs. Hamilton was always ready to assist, intuitively knowing what the young parents needed. One day, Daniel questioned Amanda about an object on Billy's mattress. Amanda, why did you place this here? Without Mrs. Hamilton's support, Amanda would have struggled significantly. This is so tiring, Amanda exclaimed. All those pregnancy books seem so wise, yet I'm tempted to sue every author and so-called expert right now. Amanda expressed her frustration as she tried to soothe Billy and stop his constant crying. Everyone said that babies mostly sleep during their first few months. I don't understand, dear, Daniel replied. Babies are indeed expected to sleep a lot during these months. It's important for their development, Mrs. Hamilton. Reflecting on her own experience raising Daniel as a single mother said, let's not rush to the doctor just yet. Modern medicine isn't always the answer. Perhaps some traditional home remedies could help Billy sleep. Following this, they tried various traditional remedies like lilac balms and essences. Although Daniel and Amanda were hesitant, they allowed Mrs. Hamilton to attempt these methods to her satisfaction. However, when none of these approaches succeeded, Amanda decided it was time to intervene. Mrs. Hamilton firmly decided against running any new trials and put her foot down. That's it. We should take him to the doctor now. The pediatrician could find no reason for Billy's inability to sleep, suggesting it might just be a temporary phase that some infants experience. Mrs. Hamilton made several attempts to comfort Billy, but he had become so accustomed to sleeping in Amanda's arms that settling down with anyone else was challenging. Daniel, ever supportive, juggled two jobs and pursued education full time, all to provide a better future for his family. Amanda, currently without a job, had postponed her college education until Billy was older, complicating the situation for everyone involved. Okay, I'm just going to let him cry it out and fall asleep on his own, Amanda declared one evening, having read that some parents successfully used this method. Daniel supported his wife's decision, Mrs. Hamilton tried to dissuade her. Fearing it was a harsh approach, despite this, Amanda maintained her composure and Daniel reaffirmed their stance, it sounds like a solid plan, mom, the doctor confirmed he's healthy, maybe he's just selective, and we need to be firmer with him, he suggested, they tried to leave Billy to self-soothe, but it was tough to ignore his cries from the next room, honey, I'm just going to sit with him, Amanda whispered, getting out of bed, I feel terrible for you and your mother, are you sure? Amanda, we had a plan, Daniel replied softly, yes, we'll figure out something else later, you need rest, and your mother shouldn't have to endure this noise at her age, Amanda reasoned before heading to the nursery, there, she found Mrs. Hamilton attempting to calm Billy, to no avail, I'm sorry, dear, nothing I do seems to help, he wants his mama, Mrs. Hamilton said, handing Billy over to Amanda, who then settled into the rocking chair and stayed there all night, the next day. Amanda was exhausted and sleep-deprived, but she clung to Billy, who had finally slept for more than three hours in her arms, feeling powerless, Daniel decided to examine the crib they had purchased, suspecting the mattress might be uncomfortable, he meticulously felt the mattress for any irregularities and pressed down to check its firmness, as he adjusted the small bed to inspect it further, something unexpected fell out, having found the cause, it's time to find the culprit, Daniel said. 
Confronting Amanda, why did you put this on Billy's mattress? What? Amanda responded in surprise, sitting up from the living room couch. I've never seen that before in my life. It wasn't his crib. Just then, Mrs. Hamilton approached him. Daniel held the stone in his hand and questioned. Oh, why did you remove the stone? I had purchased it specifically for Billy, Mrs. Hamilton replied, puzzled. And you placed it in his crib. Daniel probed further. Yes, what's the issue, Mrs. Hamilton asked, wondering if there was something wrong. I thought it would capture his dreams and help him sleep, she explained. When did you buy it? Did you just put it in his crib now? Daniel continued his inquiry. No, I got it the same day you bought the crib. It was there even before he was born. Didn't you ever notice it? Mrs. Hamilton inquired. Amanda, who generally appreciated having her mother-in-law around, struggled to contain her frustration, eventually. Amanda couldn't hold back and exclaimed, How could you just place something under the baby's crib and forget about it? We've had so many sleepless nights because of a stone. It's not just any stone, darling, you young people today wouldn't understand. This is a stone that... I don't care what the stone does, it might have been significant to you, but all it did for us was disturb our baby and disrupt our sleep, Amanda interrupted, usually. We don't stop you from doing things that seem outdated and impractical, but this was simply too much, Amanda added, interrupted by Daniel, the conversation shifted as he pointed towards Billy, water, he said, drawing their attention to Billy, Billy was nestled in his crib, curled up snugly. His tiny toes peeked out from under the blanket as his little fingers clutched the stone. Amanda nearly teared up seeing her baby sleep so peacefully, she took a moment to reassess her argument with Mrs. Hamilton, Amanda, darling, I'm so sorry, if I had known this would cause Billy discomfort, I would never have brought it home, Mrs. Hamilton said through tears, it's all right, Mrs. Hamilton, I apologize for losing my temper, you usually mean well and your heart was in the right place this time too. Amanda responded gently, let's just sit here for a few minutes and watch our little prince sleep. Amanda smiled, relieved to finally have a chance to nap and take a shower that day. Afterward, anyone could hold Billy without him fussing too much. That was the end of the endless crying and sleepless nights, at least for a few months, even though Mrs. Hamilton and Amanda rarely argued. The older woman decided it was time to give her children their space, the old house needed remodeling anyway. So Mrs. Hamilton had it demolished and rebuilt into two smaller homes, this allowed Amanda and Daniel to live independently with Billy, while Mrs. Hamilton still had the opportunity to watch over the baby. In the new nursery, Amanda decided to keep Billy's inscribed pebble by the window near the crib, despite the kind gesture from his grandmother, don't fret, little one you'll still manage to sleep. And this stone will ward off any nightmares, Amanda said joyfully. What lessons can be drawn from this tale? A caring family will always find a way to resolve their conflicts, particularly when a child's welfare is at stake. Even though Amanda, Daniel, and Daniel's mother had differing views, they consistently prioritized what was best for Billy. Never place items in a baby's crib without informing the parents, Mrs. Hamilton meant well. But Amanda was worn out for months because the stone disrupted Billy's sleep, if you found this story engaging. You might appreciate another about a woman who received a pendant, while a stranger inherited everything else, after watching this story, how do you feel, feel free to share with us in the comments section below. And then there is another similar warm story, let's continue to see, a surrogate mother believed she was expecting twins, but what occurred next was utterly unforeseen. For most parents, the birth of their child marks the pinnacle of joy in their lives, unfortunately. Not everyone is blessed with the ability to experience this joy due to various health issues and medical reasons. In such cases, the option of using a surrogate is introduced, providing a viable alternative. For one woman, choosing to be a surrogate seemed like an excellent decision at the time. She and her husband were in need of financial assistance. And when Jessica discovered the generous compensation offered for surrogacy, she was immediately attracted to the idea, however. Their journey into surrogacy soon became fraught with unexpected complications and complexities that nobody could have predicted, 
Jessica Allen was blissfully married to a supportive husband and they had two wonderful children. However, their lives took a dramatic turn when they moved into a new home that proved to be more expensive than they had anticipated, prompting them to look for ways to earn additional income. One day, Jessica came across an ad from a couple seeking a surrogate. The substantial payment offered was too tempting to ignore, so she contacted them immediately, which is when the complications began. Being a surrogate mother is an emotionally taxing role, and when Jessica told her family about her decision, they had reservations. Her husband was particularly concerned about whether she could sever emotional ties after the birth. Despite these concerns, Jessica felt confident she could handle it, believing she was in the right mental state for the challenge. Little did she know the surprises that lay ahead on her journey. Her husband Wardle was apprehensive about the upcoming events, he knew his wife well and worried about her forming an attachment to the child she would carry, especially since she deeply loved their own children. Moreover, he was uncomfortable with the fact that they could not be intimate until her pregnancy as a surrogate was confirmed. Nevertheless, Jessica pursued her goal and successfully became pregnant, then. Things quickly began to escalate. During the first ultrasound, the family was left in shock. The doctor, upon performing the ultrasound, noticed an anomaly. There were two heartbeats instead of one. When he shared this with Jessica, she was astounded. Was this some sort of mistake? The doctor explained, Well, I definitely see that there's another baby. The chances of an embryo splitting are quite slim, but it does happen. You know, I was very surprised myself. Jessica left the clinic in a bewildered state, but when she reached out to inform the couple, the prospective mother was ecstatic, no woman should miss such a miraculous twist in her surrogacy journey. Jessica, fortunate to have been granted an hour to bond with the newborn's post-delivery, cherished the opportunity to bid farewell to the twins she had nurtured for nine months, the passage of time seemed fleeting, and saying goodbye marked a poignant close to an extraordinary period in her life. Yet, upon seeing the babies, her joy was mingled with confusion due to a strange peculiarity in the boy's appearance. Reluctantly, Jessica returned the infants to their parents, sensing that something was amiss, though she couldn't pinpoint what it was. Initially, parting with the twins was tough, but as days passed, her spirits began to lift. Little did she know, she wasn't the only one who had noticed something unusual about the twins that night, as Jessica was preparing for bed. Her phone lit up with a message that left her feeling nauseous, accompanied by a disturbing photo, the message hinted at a shocking revelation that had escaped her notice until now, the text questioned the resemblance of the twins, confirming Jessica's suspicions and intensifying her anxiety. Another message soon followed, prompting her to consider the reason behind their differences, deep down, Jessica had suspected the truth, and knowing she wasn't alone was a small comfort. Yet it did little to alleviate the anguish in her heart. Among the revelations, one of the boys bore an uncanny resemblance to her husband, Jasper. Panic gripped her as she contemplated the ramifications, but she resolved to push her fears aside. There was only one course of action left for her to take. She needed answers. Jessica continued to communicate with the mother of the twins over the phone. Both women piecing together their understanding of the situation, resolved to uncover the truth. They agreed on a DNA test, the wait for the results left Jessica in a state of dread, her mind racing through all possible outcomes. As they awaited the DNA test results, Jessica braced herself for the challenges that might lie ahead, her life poised on the brink of a significant upheaval. Jessica's worst fears materialized when a DNA test confirmed her suspicions, hitting her hard with the reality of her actions. It was like living a nightmare, unknowingly, she had given her own child away. Confessing, I didn't even realize I was pregnant with you, I carried my own child without knowing he was mine, it turned out that one of the twins was the biological child of Jessica and her husband. A scenario that seemed impossible, the twins were a medical rarity that no one thought was real, but indeed it was, after the surrogate couple had their embryo implanted, Jessica, still ovulating during her pregnancy, became pregnant again. This revelation initially overwhelmed both Jessica and her husband, financially strapped. They now faced the challenge of raising another child. Could they manage it? Fortunately, the funds from the surrogacy arrangement provided some relief. And the couple was overjoyed at the prospect of having another baby. 
however, their happiness was short-lived when they faced heart-wrenching news, when discussions about retrieving their baby from the surrogate couple began, they were told they would have to purchase their own child back, faced with a choice of paying $22,000 or legally adopting their child, that's when the situation turned sour. The surrogate couple accused Jessica of not adhering to the proper procedures during conception. In defense, Jessica insisted she had waited until her pregnancy was confirmed before she and her husband were intimate, but the accusations did not stop. They threatened that Jessica would never see her son again unless she paid, shattering her heart. However, the truth about their motive soon came to light. The surrogate couple admitted they had been influenced by their lawyer, who had urged them to demand payment from Jessica. Their lawyer had misled them. Claiming Jessica was planning to sue for custody of her son, but Jessica had no such intentions, all she wanted was her baby boy, Malachi. After much debate and an unhappy meeting on the part of the surrogate couple, Jessica was finally reunited with her baby boy, Malachi, now a family of five. They were happier than ever, and little Malachi, unaware of the impact he had made in the news world was finally in the place he belonged. Do you have any insights after watching the above stories? Feel free to tell us in the comments sections below. That's all about our today's stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. See you next time.